drop cloths. This is another thing when we're working on patios and porches, if you don't have a lot of experience controlling overspray or um, painting, you just wanna take and put some drop cloths out to cover your concrete areas, you know, several feet out. So if you get any fallout, you know, on um, from spraying your soffits and stuff falling out, the, the drop cloths will give you that added protection. We've been spraying a long time. We got a lot of experience, you know, controlling overspray. So on concrete, we typically don't lay those drop cloths out, but if we're on a wood deck or anything or got furniture and stuff. We um, are always putting drop cloths out. And that does bring up another issue is overspray when you got patio furniture, stuff like that. You definitely want to move all that patio furniture out away about 15 yards from the house, get it away um, so you don't get any overspray on that. Or if it's not movable, you just cover it with nine by 400 plastic. And nine by 400 plastic is, is um, cheap and easy to cover patio furniture with. So we're here, you know, working behind some and around some plants and in order to control, you know, getting overspray on the plants that are up against the house, you can see we actually tie them back with plastic and we use nine by 400 plastic to actually tie these plants back. Do you got a video teaching you how to simply and easily tie plants back and I'll give you a link to that. Just click on the video right up here to go check that video out, tying plants back. And once you um, untie this, the plastic is still usable to cover, say, furniture and stuff, but it's really cheap and you could just throw it away because it doesn't cost a whole lot. It's better than getting overspray on the plants. But we just tie it back. You can cover it up with a drop cloth if you want um, to give you that added measure, but if you're using the proper tip, the proper pressure, you're not gonna get any fallout on these plants. And we've already painted around here and these plants don't have any overspray or fallout on it because we're using the proper methods to control overspray. So if you've never seen a roll of this 9 by 400 plastic, this is just what it looks like. This is a roll of it, 9 by 400, and it just comes in uh, large boxes and uh, I think I pay about ten ten dollars and fifty cents a box for that stuff And that's a pretty large roll. It does go a long way, and it's very inexpensive Now here I am working I've got this fence right here just working around this fence and the footings Now you can if you uncomfortable just roll one roll of paper you can actually use your card or one um, row of paper, you can use your cardboard shield to help control overspray also. Now you can see, uh, once I get spray, once I've sprayed around this window, this is still wet. I'll show you, I'm gonna pull this paper off and then somebody can actually start rolling this window because we've controlled the overspray over these windows by um, making our painting process a lot faster by covering it with paper. See, I can pull this paper off now. and somebody could actually start rolling this trim. You see to control any overspray from getting on the glass, we've already got plastic mast and that's 3M uh, plastic 72 inch film. So once again, one of the most, most important and and key elements in controlling overspray is your pump pressure and your tip. Say you're probably one of the biggest mistakes that painters make is using their tips too long, uh, too much to where they're actually blown out. And um, you actually, you can actually, once you've been spraying long enough with another sprayer, you can tell when a tip is actually new or old by the sound it makes and when it starts to hiss really loud. And if you start to feel droplets coming down on you, you know that that, uh, that tip is actually worn out. And like I say, on ours, a Graco, Grac, Graco, Graco Rack X tip, a 515 tip is what we typically spray our exteriors with. Those tips are typically lasting for about three or four houses. 
So actually the, the tip, the gallons calculating it out, we're actually using a tip for about 60 gallons of resilience paint. So now some paints are more and less abrasive and they'll wear the tips out slower or faster. You've just got to go by sound and feel and what that tip is actually doing. So we're using Sherwin's resilience and those tips are lasting about 60 gallons and then we're buying another tip and we're paying probably about 25 to 30 dollars per tip and if on a blown out tip you're going to be on each house wasting about a gallon of paint per house and that in itself is about thirty dollars right there so you're going to save the money it's all going to equal itself out by using a new tip so don't try to use those tips too long and make sure your pressure is not too high if you're running your pressure up around three thousand or higher than that you're going to get way too much overspray run that pressure on exteriors with a 515 tip between 2200 and 2500 psi see over here to help control overspray and to actually uh, create nice lines on our pipes and, and electrical components you can see how we've masked this situation right here we got a sprinkler box right here we got the gas meter right here we want nice crisp lines on those things we got another situation right here behind me where we've used our masking to help control overspray we've got an awning up here roll out awning and we just mask that with nine inch paper one inch tape we've got a door that we've just wrapped some paper around a glass door to control the overspray then we got our window right here that we've masked off too and we're just continuing rolling down the line here spraying got a fence here and a heater right here that we've masked also just want another show you another uh tip or technique with your gun when you're actually you know feathering some if you're working on a high area you've got to try to um feather it out so you don't have lap marks on your house and if you want to control the overspray if it's a windy day or there's a lot of wind you don't want to feather it out really significantly so the paint is going away from the house because it'll carry up out in the wind so you got to try to um you know feather it with just your trigger and keeping your gun pointing straight at the house and just slightly feather it you don't want to get it exaggerated where it's coming out too much because you're going to get a lot of overspray it's good to try to feather it but not so significantly just make your feathering fairly light it's just more in in trigger control releasing and pulling the trigger at the proper time and just doing a slight feather when you're up on high sides or um, doing overlaps on a long run that you can't actually walk from um, end to end you see we're running our Titan 1140 sprayer right here and this one's pretty simple because it's got a digital readout and it tells me my set PSI is 2190 PSI and the actual PSI while it's running it fluctuates but it's running right around 2200 to 2100 PSI if you got a sprayer that doesn't have a digital readout it's a little more difficult to tell how much PSI you're running but it still should be running about 2200 but it's nice to have a spray with a digital readout so you know exactly so definitely get questions about the wind when you're actually spraying and overspray on windy days and if you know how to correctly you know control your overspray with your cardboard shields with your plastic with your drop cloths and just turning down your pressure on your sprayer a little bit when it's windy outside that doesn't stop us from painting we continue to paint we just are more conscious about controlling our overspray and I've never in the as long as I've been in business with my company BNK Painting, I've never once had an overspray claim in my career and I've got tens of thousands of hours of spraying so it has given me the practice, you know, controlling overspray and not getting overspray on stuff.